Good morning, kindergartners. I am planning on taking you on a little trip today. We can't go on trips right now, so we're gonna go on a trip in music class. But I was thinking about um, what some songs that we have learned that we haven't been able to practice. Your teachers taught you this earlier this year. Um, when I think about trips, I think about the whole world. Remember the globe? Do you remember all your continents and oceans? Let's try. We've got the whole globe in our hands. 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 We've got North and South America in our hands. We've got Europe, Asia, Africa in our hands. We've got Australia and Antarctica in our hands. We've got the whole globe in our hands. Did you get all those continents? What about the oceans? Da, 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 da. Oceans, oceans, oceans are beautiful blue. Oceans, oceans, I can name the oceans, can you? Atlantic's the name of an ocean, Pacific and Indian too. The Arctic is often forgotten. I can name the oceans, can't you? Oceans, oceans, oceans are beautiful blue. Oceans, oceans, I can name the oceans, can you? Can too. Oh, I hope you saved the can too for the end. How about, does God have the whole world in his hands? Let's sing that. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got North and South America in his hands. He's got Europe, Asia, Africa in his hands. He's got Australia and Antarctica in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God has the whole world in his hands? The world has been a little, it seemed a little topsy-turvy lately. I'll have to tell you, it's been a little weird. But you know what? God, we can trust God. God has the whole world in his hands. That is true. Let's pray to him and thank him for that today. Dear God, thank you for holding us in your hands. You safely have us. And we thank you for that. You are our God. You are so good. We are so blessed to be your children. I pray you be with these kindergartners today. I pray you be with Mrs. Prem and Mrs. Hofer and Mrs. Kaiser. And I pray you bless them all as they teach. Help us, Lord, to trust in you, to realize that you have everything in your hands. We love you. In your name we ask it. Amen. Okay. Well, where I wanted to go today is a place, oh, you place that you like to go, a place that probably all of you have went to, maybe not recently, we're going to Grandma's house. Yay, Grandma's house, and you may be at your Grandma's house. You might, your Grandma might live far away. Your Grandma might be here, but you might not be able to see her right now, but you know what? there'll be a time when we all can get back together and we're just going to imagine it today. So, I'm gonna take you to my grandma's house. Hopefully you can still see me when I sit down. Now this is what my grandma looks like. She has glasses, but they're just little glasses. These are grandma's glasses. And my grandma likes to wear a garden hat, but it's just a little hat. And this is grandma's hat. And this is the way she folds her hands, just like that. Is that what your grandma does? Maybe. Just has these nice little glasses and this nice little hat. And she folds her hands just like that. 
Can you say it like Grandma? These are Grandma's glasses. And this is Grandma's hat. And this is the way she folds her hands, just like that. Is that what Grandpa does? No, Grandpa is the big Grandpa. He works hard and he laughs. When Grandpa laughs, it sounds like this. Ho, 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 ho. Is that what your Grandpa sounds like? These are Grandpa's glasses. And this is Grandpa's hat. He has a big cowboy hat. My Grandpa does. And this is the way he folds his hands, just like that. Can you say it like Grandpa? These are Grandpa's glasses. And this is Grandpa's hat. And this is the way he folds his hands, just like that. But these are Grandma's glasses, and this is Grandma's hat, and this is the way she folds her hands, just like that. How about Grandpa again? These are Grandpa's glasses, and this is Grandpa's hat, and this is the way he folds his hands, just like that. Grandmas and Grandpas are different. Just like God made everybody different, aren't they? And everybody is special and uh, precious in his sight. When I would go see my grandparents, they did have a big, it wasn't really a farm, but they had a big garden and they had a big chicken coop. And so I was a city girl. I lived in the city, so it sure felt like a farm to me. And right next to them lived a horse. It was not their horse, but sometimes the person that owned the horse would come and visit us, and, or come and visit the, their horse, and if they were there and we were at Grandma's house, we got to ride that horse sometimes. His name was Joker. His name was Joker. Oh, and I brought, is it okay if I bring my little friend, Mr. Horsey, today? I brought him to visit you. Can everyone say hi, Mr. Horsey? Hi! I like to hear you sing. Oh, Mr. Horsey loves to hear you guys sing. All my friends like to hear you guys sing. And I know a song too. You want to hear my song? Do you want to hear Mr. Horsey's song? Of course you do. He's so cute. With his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, my goodness. That was, do you remember we say, I think we sang that song before. And it's an action song. You've got to sing with Mr. Horse, but you've got to have your foot on the ground. You can do it in a chair like I am. You can do it standing up if you would like. I'm gonna start out in a chair and I'm gonna let Mr. Horse do it. Can we sing with Mr. Horsey? I would love it if they'd sing with me. You wanna sing with them? Here we, uh, let me find a good place to sing that. Here we go. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, very good job. But, 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 I'm not done yet. Oh, there's more. Same horse, other foot. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot on the ground. Well, that was a fun, but, 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 not that yet. Oh my goodness, there's more. Same horse, both feet. Oh, the horse stood around with his feet on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his feet on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his feet on the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his feet on the ground. I moved back because I know I cut off my head for half the lesson last time. 
and um, I'm sorry about that. So I moved back. I hope that makes my head show better. I hope I have my perspective right. Oh, well, that was fun, but, 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 but I'm not done yet. Still not done. Same horse, one foot off. Can you get one foot off? Oh my goodness, let's see if Mrs. Kelly can do it. You gotta do it with me. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot off the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot off the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot off the ground. Oh, the horse stood around with his foot off the ground. Oh man, that was tricky. But, but, but I'm not done yet. Oh no. Same horse other foot oh the horse stood around with his foot off the ground oh the horse stood around with his foot off the ground oh the horse stood around with his foot off the ground oh the horse stood around with his foot off the ground please tell me you're done i'm done oh i was getting a little scared now mr horse you have four feet we only have two. I think that's a little harder for us than it is for you. It was fun. I love singing with the boys and girls. Oh, I do too. I do too. I'm going to have Mr. Horse. He's going to watch and listen to you guys sing. Um, that singing Joker, this horse that lived next door to my grandma's house, was only one fun thing that I got to do at my grandma's. I love to actually sometimes we would feed, feed him carrots and corn cobs. He liked to eat the cobs of corn. And you know where I got the corn? My grandparents had a huge garden. It filled up like a whole, it seemed like a whole football field. It wasn't that big, but man, when I was a little kid, it sure seemed huge. And they would have corn on the cob. Oh, it was so delicious. I loved it. And so I would go and help in the garden. They had cherry trees and peach trees, and we would get to help and we get to pick fruit. And my grandma had beautiful flower gardens. In fact, um, they said that my sister would always say that you would look in the cracks in her sidewalk and a flower would just pop up. She just was so good at making flowers, or not making, God made the flowers, uh, but so good at growing them. And you know, Mrs. Kelly has tried to grow some things. Uh, I don't have my, my grandma was a wonderful, is a wonderful, she's still, she's still with us. She is 90, she'll be 94 years old this summer. And she still can play the piano beautifully. Uh, and I love to play the piano. I'm not, as, I'm not as wonderful as a pianist as she is, but I love to play the piano. And I'm trying to grow some things, but oh, I, I don't know if I got that, that skill. But I would love to look at her flowers, all these different colors of flowers. It was so beautiful. There were blue ones. In fact, some of them were blue bells. Some of them were cockle shells. And you know what? There were some there were some arches that she would have in her flower garden. And they would have these beautiful Evie Ivy over it. Evie Ivy overhead. Blue bells, cockle shells, Evie Ivy overhead. If you were here, I would play a game with you right now. And we would take our hands together. Can you pretend? Can you grab out to my hands? And we're gonna go, blue bells, cockle shells, Ivy Ivy overhead. Wait a minute, what happened to our hands when I went way up in the sky? Am I gonna, am I gonna swing you up in the sky? I'll show you what we really are going to do. And when you come back in first grade, we're gonna do this game. Right now, let's grab hands. And we're gonna go this way first. Blue bells, cockle shells, Evie Ivy overhead. We're going to um, take our hands and twist back to back and front to front, and it's a really fun game. So right now, we're just gonna have to pretend. But when you guys come back to school, and I hope I didn't cut my head off again, when you come back to school, we're gonna try this together and it'll be a fun game to play in first grade. Ready? Take hands, pretend. Ready? Blue bells, cockle shells, Evie Ivy overhead. Try it again. Blue bells, cockle shells, Evie Ivy overhead. 
I promise you, you will like this game. It's a fun game. Okay, we're going to continue our visit at Grandma's house. So, at Grandma and Grandpa's house, too, Grandpa loved to watch birds. And he had lots of bird houses. He would make bird houses at, um, at his house. He loved to make things with wood. And he loved to watch the different birds. And of course, I love to watch the birds. We talked about those in the last class. Birds, well, they don't go down, do they? They, they go higher than a house, don't they? Higher than a tree. Oh, but the birds don't normally do this. Now I think there are maybe some penguins and some, some ones, but it's some other creatures. And my grandparents had these creatures too. No, they did not have a jellyfish, but they had um, goldfish. She had a goldfish pond in her flower bed underneath the water, underneath the sea. Which one could it? Hmm, this creature. If it's a creature that goes up high, I'm going to use my voice and I'm gonna go, which one could it be? And if it's a creature that goes down low, I'm going to go, which one could it be? What do you think? Up high, down low, I've never seen any octopus fly in the sky. So we're gonna go, which one could it be? Very good, I hope you got that right. Let's try it again. Higher than a house, higher than a tree, underneath the water, underneath the sea, which one could it go up high? Be, which one could it, sing it with me, which one could it be? Now, I'm sorry, I wish you were here to make these choices because normally the music teacher does not have to sing the last note. It's the kid's job. So I'll go, which one could it? Did you sing B? The seahorses, I've also not seen them in trees. I've seen them, I can't say that I've even seen them under the water. I think I've seen them at a aquarium. Um, seahorses definitely down low. Let's try it again. Here we go. Higher than a house, higher than a tree. Underneath the water, underneath the sea. Which one could it? Oh, in my brain I heard people going, Bee! Was that you, Ellie? I think it was Ellie, I think it was Lauren, I think it was Scott. Which one could it be? Was it you, Job? Yes, I think so. Montana? I hope that I heard a lot of people singing, Bee! Andrew, you got it right, Grayson? Yes, I think we had a lot of boys and girls who knew to make their voices go up into the sky. Let's try one more. Here we go, higher than a house, higher than a tree, underneath the water, underneath the sea. Which one could it? Be? Kind of hard to sing that one, that one with a soft dynamic, isn't it? Be? Let it out, let it come out. Yes, good job, good job. And I'm gonna blank this out. And um, you passed the test of some things, some creatures, and then even the last one, of course, was an airplane. And some of them go up into the sky, some of them go down. And our voices have to follow it. So our voices go up for the, for the ones that go up in the sky, for the ones that go down under the water. Our voices can go down. It's something we can do in music. So thank you for doing that with me. Now I have to tell you though, there's something else I love to do at my grandma's house. I love to have story time. Did you have story time with your grandma? 
Maybe some of your grandmas, if they can't be with you. I know some grandmas I've seen that have been reading books to their grandchildren. Um, and they've been reading to them on, oh, and Miss Kelly put her glasses on. I hope that didn't throw you off too much. Uh, reading to their grandkids like this, like I'm reading to you today. And I'm going to read to you another book. I know that's Mrs. Harm's job and your kindergarten teacher's job, but can I read one too? Because in this story, you're going to hear some different sounds of voices. You probably have heard this story. And I want to make sure I'm close enough to you. And Mrs. Harms, I hope you're looking at Mrs. Harms stories online. She's the one who let me borrow this book to share with you today. So I'm going to scoot to the side so you can see the story. And I sure hope you can see that well. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once there was a sweet little girl called Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in town. That's what you think, says the neighbor. Oh my. One morning, Goldilocks' mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who do exactly as they please. Oh no, I don't think this is going to go well. That is not the way we are supposed to live our life. Look at her, she's going through the shortcut. It's trying to warn her, danger, very risky, not a good idea, turn back, go the other way. She, her mother had told her, Hmm, Goldilocks. Meanwhile, in the clearing, deep inside the forest, in a charming house all their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to breakfast. Patooey, cried the big old papa bear. This porridge is scalding. I burn my tongue. Cried Baby Bear. Now, really, said Mama Bear, who is of medium size, that's quite enough. Ah, oh, no, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin while the porridge is cooling? Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. Oh, Look at Papa Bear. You think he is singing a song? It says, tra-la. Of course, when Papa Bear sings a song, it sounds like this, tra-la. And when Mama Bear sings a song, it sounds like this, tra-la. Kind of like Mrs. Kelly's voice. When Baby Bear sings a song, it sounds like this, tra-la, tra-la-la-la. And there they go on a nice adventure. Oh, no. Look what has happened. A few minutes later, Goldilocks arrived at the bear's house. She walked right in without even bothering to knock. On the dining room table, there were three inviting bowls of porridge. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. Oh my goodness, Goldilocks. I hope that you are not behaving like Goldilocks decided to behave during this time. We're going to save the rest of it for next music class. Because Goldilocks is not making the best decisions, is she? No. In fact, she's being disobedient. Disobeying her mother. What's Ephesians 6, 1 say? It's your C verse, isn't it? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Goldilocks is having a hard time doing that, isn't she? Mm. Remember the song we learned this year? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key 
do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. I'm singing O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Why am I holding up nine fingers? Nine letters. That is a big, big word. It wasn't even on your spelling list. Can you spell it with me? O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. It's a good nine letter word and it's a good word for you to be letting the Lord work in your heart every single day. Because God, that's what he told kids to do. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. God tells us to do it. If God tells us to do it, is it the right choice? Goldilocks is not making that choice. We're gonna find out what happens to her next time. And we're going to get to do some more music next week. Thank you for joining me again. I'm sorry that our time is already up, but I will see you guys again. Um, I'll have another video to you next Monday. So I miss you guys.